In Pursuit of a Miracle is an inspirational story of love and remarkable courage in the midst of a most challenging set of life circumstances. It's about what it takes to live with and make the best of an extraordinarily difficult and rare situation, one that calls forth hope and faith, and yes, even charity. In the interest of full disclosure, we hope our story resonates with you and moves you to join us in our journey in pursuit of a miracle. As an additional incentive to hear us out, we hope also you'll accept our gift of the Mighty Mind Expander, a mini-seminar for thinkers who would like to expand their mindfulness. A brief explanation of this program follows this presentation. My name is Mel Solon. I'm 76 years old, and this is my incredible wife, Bryna, 71. She's not only beautiful and adorable, she's courageous and an inspiration to all who know her. More on her courage in a moment. Say hello, Bryna. Hello, Bryna. For you romantics, Bryna and I met at a singles dance at the Beverly Hilton Hotel on a Friday night, went on her first date that Sunday, and got engaged three days later on Valentine's Day. To keep my father in the loop, I called him at 4 a.m., 7 a.m. his time, to tell him I was engaged. I said, Dad, I'm getting married. He said, Are you drunk? I said, No. He said, Is she rich? I said, No. He said, Is she Jewish? I said, Yes. He said, God bless. Three weeks later, we got married in Vegas. Our plan is to celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary this coming March. And our hope is to celebrate many anniversaries after that. I say hope because on January 30th, 2014, Bryna was formally diagnosed with ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease, a terminal neuromuscular disease with no present cure or treatment. Originally, her symptoms were attributed to moderate spinal stenosis with surgery as a solution a solution we rejected. Instead, we spent much of 2013 searching for a more definitive understanding of her symptoms, which, retrospectively, she can date back to 2012. Our search included three MRIs, three CAT scans, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, three EMGs, plus some chiropractic, acupuncture, and three months of physical therapy. Gravely, the final clinical diagnosis spoken by a team of two neurologists, you have ALS. With this formal diagnosis, we knew our life was suddenly about to change forever in very dramatic and challenging ways. Bryna is not only my love, my best friend, and my personal motivator, she's also been my assistant and business partner for much of my career in the personal development field, motivating and helping people achieve their goals and dreams. Quite frankly, it's a career I find much more rewarding than my earlier years as a CPA and stockbroker. To understand why I call her courageous and an inspiration to all who know her, I'd love for you to listen to Bryna's introduction to The Mighty Mind Expander, an audio seminar product I began developing in 2014 and have since updated in major ways in 2015. It's offered here for free with no obligation. In her introduction, you will hear Bryna's inspiring and uplifting attitude toward receiving a terminal medical prognosis. If you're hearing In Pursuit of a Miracle on YouTube, go to thethinkingplace.com to hear the seminar. Our story reaffirms two quotations. One, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Which is why we always say, set your goals in concrete and your plans in sand. When your goals and dreams seem out of reach or are abruptly interrupted, don't give up. Simply change your methods, rewrite your plans, and remember this quote, attributed to Jesus. When you've exhausted all possibilities, remember this one thing, you haven't. Our goal and plan was to pace ourselves and to be in the self-development field together for the rest of our lives. Retirement wasn't in our vocabulary. With a little rewriting of our plans and some changes in our methods, our dream is still alive, even with ALS, an unwelcome visitor in our lives. Specifically, in ALS, 
the ability of the brain to initiate and control muscle movement is lost. With voluntary muscle action progressively affected, patients in the later stages of the disease may become totally paralyzed. Yet, the brain itself is unaffected. For a condensed explanation of the disease, visit our website and click on ALS in the navigation bar. According to the ALS Association, life expectancy averages just two to five years after diagnosis. Some, about 5%, make it past 20 years. But Stephen Hawking, the 73-year-old theoretical physicist whose story was told in the Academy Award-winning movie, The Theory of Everything, has beaten the odds. He's had it for 52 years, and no one's sure why. While scientists don't know for certain what causes ALS, some experts suggest Hawking's longevity may be because he was diagnosed so young, early 20s. Leo McCluskey, medical director of the Penn ALS Center, told Scientific American in 2012 that a patient could survive ALS for a long time if they didn't succumb to respiratory failure or deterioration of the swallowing muscles. Hawking, in the New York Times in 2011, credits his longevity to having been lucky to have top-notch medical care and a job that engages his mind. He also considers the possibility that he just may have a rare form of motor neuron disease. I believe it also helps if the patient is cared for and comforted by loved ones who are able and willing to support the patient's desire to live. On a personal level, Bryna is now bedridden, unable to feed herself, scratch her nose, dial a phone, or change the channel on the TV. Physically, because of the hospital bed provided by hospice, she has no bed sores. She does, however, experience intermittent joint and back pain, plus some bouts with edema, mouth sores, and neuropathy. Most significantly, her ability to speak is now unintelligible. Note that her voice in her first video clip, also near the end of this recording, was recorded many months ago before she lost her speaking voice. Regarding this disability, ALS literature reports that the loss of the ability to communicate and the corresponding sense of helplessness it creates is perhaps the most emotionally and mentally devastating aspect of the disease. The loss of input into one's own care represents a loss of independence that is so frightening and frustrating it makes paralysis seem a minor problem. Dealing with deterioration of her swallowing ability is another challenge. Up to a short while ago, even fluids had to be spoon-fed since they required thickening and could not be taken with a straw. This was done to reduce the chance of aspiration pneumonia. How we're dealing with these two major issues, the inability to communicate and difficulty swallowing, will be addressed in a moment. Despite Bryna's complete paralysis and physical discomfort, her mind is sharp. Her sense of humor and acerbic wit are fully intact, as her visitors can attest. What she doesn't want is pity. Meet her and you too will sense her courage and strength and her unique ability to inspire others. To the question, why are we hopeful? Here's our thinking. When we first heard the diagnosis, we stoically accepted the prognosis as an early death sentence. We thought we were being realistic. After all, there was no cure or effective treatment. And because ALS only affects 30,000 people at any one time, compared to hundreds of thousands or millions for most well-known diseases, there had been little funding for research. Fortunately, however, because of the increase in public awareness and the fundraising results of the Ice Bucket Challenge, this is no longer the case. Taking this Ice Bucket Challenge for my sister-in-law, Brian, who has ALS, my brother, who is her main caregiver, and um, their business that they've had together is kind of cut short. But if you want to see what he's all about, he's at uh, www.thethinkingplace.com. And I challenged my, oh, my grandson to take over the challenge. Okay? <laughs> Given the increase in funding, plus advancements in technology, the search for a cure or effective treatment has been progressing at a greatly accelerated rate. So much has been learned about the disease in just the past months 
that it's not unrealistic to believe that a cure could come in Brenna's lifetime, however long that may be. There's even the rare possibility of remission, regression, or plateauing. Miracles do happen. But rather than just hope for a miracle, that is to have Brina live long enough to benefit when a cure is found, we're doing everything we can to pursue this miracle. For example, with the knowledge that a patient could survive ALS for a long time if they didn't die of respiratory failure or complications related to difficulty swallowing, we decided after much research that Brina would undergo a procedure to utilize a feeding tube, which she did very recently. With a medically designed feeding formula, she has already regained some of the 20 pounds she lost during the past year. In addition to improving her nutritional health, using the feeding tube also assures that she stays sufficiently hydrated. To deal with the loss of her ability to speak and avoid the locked-in syndrome, being paralyzed with no ability to communicate, we pursued the acquisition of an AAC device. AAC stands for Augmentative Alternative Communication. It's a computer with special software that enables her to write and speak with either the blinking of her eyes or with a gyroscopic wireless mouse and small movements of her head. With the help of a determined speech and language pathologist, we recently acquired this equipment on loan from Team Gleason, a wonderful organization committed to helping people with ALS. Hello again. Due to my medical condition, I am unable to speak, so I use this device to talk. I hope you will finish listening to this presentation and find it in your heart to join us and the ALS and Muscular Dystrophy Associations in our pursuit of a miracle. Bless you and thank you. Imagine, with this extraordinary equipment, Brian is now not only better able to communicate her wants and needs, But soon, with training and practice, she'll be able to write and send emails, surf the web, and continue to visit with friends. Also, depending on her energy, she'll be sharing her inspirational perspective on what it means to live with ALS in our newsletter, The Thinker's Edge. To receive it, click on Contact Us at our website. No longer will she be limited to watching endless episodes of Law & Order and H&G TV. As Bryna's 24-7 caregiver, I am her arms and legs, not counting periodic visits from hospice nurses and two bed baths a week, I am essentially her full-time nurse. As such, I attend to her each and every want and need from morning to night, a job I've been told typically requires three to five shifts daily of caregivers with various specialties. Even if we could afford it, as much as $400 to $800 or more per day, depending on skill level, Bryna has made it clear that her desire now is to spend however much time she's blessed with at home in comfortable, familiar surroundings with me as her caregiver. Unfortunately, attending to Bryna's needs and the rest of life's demands, including those of house husband, makes it impossible to pursue business the way we used to. The little business I can do, including writing our newsletter, maintaining our website, managing Facebook, and handling email, I often do between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. after she goes to sleep. I'm then back up after five to seven hours of sleep, sometimes interrupted, ready for pill time and her first feeding. With support of family and friends, I'm handling my responsibilities surprisingly well given that ALS research states that 40 to 70% of family caregivers have clinically significant symptoms of depression. And approximately a quarter to half of these caregivers meet the diagnostic criteria for major depression. Incidentally, one of my recurrent tasks as caregiver is to reassure Bryna that she is not a burden. This is a major concern of patients who are immobilized and can't speak. I reassure her with these four consoling thoughts. One, I acknowledge that while my job can sometimes be stressful and quite frustrating, I let her know that I'm aware it's 1,000 times as frustrating for her. 
Two, I simply tell her that she's attended to my needs throughout our life, and it's now my turn to give back. Three, I assure her that the spiritual nourishment I receive from caring for her is my selfish reward. This allows me to care for her both willingly and lovingly. Lastly, I affirm my commitment to our vows, for better or worse, in sickness and in health, to death do us part. Note that although Bryna is currently receiving hospice care, it doesn't include feeding or full-time hands-on nursing. If I have to leave the house, we have to either hire someone or have a friend stay with her, someone who has the physical ability to lift her out of bed onto a porta potty even if only for a false alarm, and off the potty back into bed. Fortunately, the number of potty trips were reduced when she got a catheter. In any case, it's a task I've handled quite capably up to now but my seven-year-old hernia could become problematic. Also, I recently developed a weird problem with my right knee and possibly some arthritis in my left hip. Ah, the joys of aging. Although I've been working around these issues up to now, I'm quite certain we'll soon be in need of medical and non-medical private duty home care services, which, as previously mentioned, can be very expensive. In addition, Brian is currently in need of a cough assist machine. And I, too, may soon need assistance, since Bryna hates the Hoyer lift. Quite frankly, our two small Social Security checks hardly cover our modest living costs, let alone any extraordinary comfort expenses, expensive home care services, or future medical procedures. As you can see, we really could use some help. To address our situation, we've come up with a plan. A plan that will allow Bryna and I... One, to continue working together, helping people achieve their goals and dreams with the aid of our materials. Two, to help those up against tough times strengthen their resolve to keep their hopes, dreams, and spirit alive. Three, to help increase public awareness of ALS by personalizing this devastating disease. And lastly, to serve as a fundraising vehicle for the ALS and Muscular Dystrophy Associations through our website. Note that what's ever learned about ALS and muscular dystrophy will directly or indirectly benefit people with multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and even Alzheimer's, plus other brain and motor neuron-related diseases. To implement our plan, we're asking the compassionate and charitable souls who hear our story for their help. If you're one of these souls and it's in your heart to help, here are three ways you can do so. One, at our website, thethinkingplace.com, click on either the Donate Now button in the navigation bar or on any of the Click Here to Make a Donation links. Two, at our website, click on the GoFundMe.com link or go directly to GoFundMe.com and click on the Medical category and choose Help Bryna in her battle with ALS. Three, you can also help by sharing our love story and our seminar gift through social media, or by putting us in contact with whomever you may know who can provide us with print or airtime. Note that a portion of your donation will be shared between the ALS and Muscular Dystrophy Associations to help them in their quest to find a cure for these devastating diseases. As a further incentive to donate to our cause, we offer you, for free and no obligation, the Mighty Mind Expander a unique audio mind-expanding thinking experience. Specifically, the Mighty Mind Expander at under two hours is a comprehensive, condensed personal development mini-seminar based on my past 10-week live seminar series. Presented in five bite-sized sections, this seminar will stimulate you to rethink what you think about your life, your success and happiness, your motivation, and how to change habits and attitudes. In the process, it will help you develop your psychological resilience, achieve premeditated happiness, and become more of the person you idealize yourself to be. If you're under stress, listen to the Mighty Mind Expander, and in no time, your mind will clear, the tension in your muscles will dissipate, and the stress you're experiencing will dissolve. Said Tom Zeman, author of The Department of Zenitation, the Mighty Mind Expander delivers messages of hope, timeless wisdom, and positive reinforcement. It's deep, meaty, thoroughly thought-provoking, and poignant. 
For more testimonials, see the bottom of our homepage, and remember to listen to Bryna's moving audio-video introduction. To those of you donated here, or previously donated money, time, or food to our cause, or did shopping for us, bless you. Thank you for hearing our story, and may your warm-hearted soul bring you much joy and great happiness. Say goodbye, Bryna. Goodbye, Bryna.